Okay, Cadwell bogey section, the gooseneck. The gooseneck at Cadwell is another tricky section to get right, and there's several reasons why it's so hard to get right. Firstly, it's a section and not just one corner. It's another chicane, right, left. Next, both apexes are blind until you're almost upon them. And even though you can accelerate hard and sit the bike up slightly after the Chris's kink, through the whole section, Chris's and the gooseneck are taken almost as one curve, not corner straight corner. Also, because the gooseneck is at the end of a really long curve that isn't too easy to get right either, I've decided to cover Chris's curve and the gooseneck together and combine them and show them how they link up, forming a huge section. Leaving part corner behind you after a short burst of throttle, I tend to ease back and whilst on a closed throttle, shift up into a higher gear that can take me all the way around Chris's curve and into the gooseneck. Mainly because I don't want to change gear mid corner and maybe unsettle a bike. Plus, because you're almost at full lean at Chris's curve kink, you can't use full power anyway. Closing in on the apex where the curb used to be, pick up the throttle and maintain a steady amount of throttle. If you accelerate too early here, you'll run off line. Not enough and you'll fall in towards the inside of the track. Continue until you reach the second apex. Difficult to spot as there's no curb, but there's some plastic matting shoved into the ground over the short section of the grass. Use this as the point where you start to develop the throttle. As you develop the throttle, you'll start to use more of the track. Progressively, allow the bike to drift out to the left. Then there's a slip road that comes in from the left near the Marshall's hut. Use this as the point where you've transitioned from the right over to the left, by now driving really hard. There are a few bumps in the middle of the track here which can unsettle a bike. It's another reason why I do my short shifts so early in the corner, but keep driving hard. There isn't a straight as such between Chris's and the gooseneck, however the next bit is the straightest part of the curve and where the majority of the acceleration and braking is done. You can see the marshal's post from here which is just before the apex of the right of the gooseneck, however there are virtually no other easy to spot references to use as your braking reference. I can only say either use a skid mark or a blemish in the track surface that you might find on the day that works for you. Not very scientific I know, but there's an element of gut feeling needs to be used here. The main thing is stay out to the left until you're much closer to the corner, thus opening the approach up to the right. As you're still carrying a big lean angle here, your braking needs to be a smooth squeeze on the brakes. Not aggressive, but hard, with a short trail and then use the engine braking to take you in towards the apex. There's a surface change roughly halfway from your braking point to the apex, which also coincides with the point you move from the left side of the track over towards the right. Use this as the point you will release the brakes, allowing you to carry speed into the corner. At this point the apex curb comes into view, but remember the apex is at the other end of the curb. This is the point where, if required, you can pick up the throttle to maintain your current speed, or Stay off it and let the bike carry on closing in on the kerb, but don't accelerate at this point, otherwise it'll push you out into the middle of the track and ruin your transition and your exit. From the end of the apex kerb, this is where you have to start your transition, right to left, counter steering and moving your body weight at the same time. This speed, how fast you change direction, needs to match your ground speed. The faster you change direction, within reason, the faster you can travel through the corner. At the end of the kerb you still can't actually see the apex of the left but you need to start the transition. If you wait until you can see the apex before starting your transition you'll miss it. There's also a significant camber change between the two apexes. If you run wide at the right apex it takes you over to the camber of the left creating in effect a negative camber. Not good. Another reason to stay over to the right using the positive camber of the right corner. It's only as you're halfway through the transition mid-track before the left apex comes into view. This is where you have to fine-tune your tip in towards the apex. 
The track drops into a dip at the apex which creates a compression in the suspension and a rise out towards the drift out curve which at this point is still out of view. Don't sit the bike up too quickly as it's easy to run out of track at the exit. Keep leaning left using this point to start to develop the throttle out the corner. If you're accelerating quite hard here it can cause the bike to wheelie over the rise as the drift out curve comes into view. Use the end of the drift out curve as your aim point which takes you down towards Mansfield. Let's see how that looks again at normal speed. Get on board for just $5 a month to see my exclusive content. But if you like what I do, you can subscribe on higher tiers for greater rewards.